Jumping into the number five spot of the best ultra budget gaming mice is the Logitech G203. Coming in at a price tag of around 24 or 25 bucks. There will be Amazon links below for all five of these mice for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. Check below for current pricing. But the Logitech G203 in the number five spot. The sensor, what is it? Well, it is the Logitech's mercury sensor. Now the sensor does get some hate, but during my usage, I had no problems with it at all. Obviously, I do prefer some of the other sensors on this list. However, unless you're very, very good at gaming, I probably would not even consider this in the deciding factor of what mouse you're going to get, as I think things like weight and the overall shape matter a little bit more than this. Now, the build quality here is actually very, very good. This is essentially the same as the Logitech G305, basically this, but in wireless format, which is a little bit more expensive, obviously, but the same shape, really good build quality, and in some ways, this one's actually better than the 305. Namely, on the left and the right side, as well as the underneath, but that doesn't matter, it has this more grippy texture to it. It's kind of sandpaper-esque, um, but it's not quite harsh. So when gripping this, you do have a little bit more grip. So for liftoffs, uh, things like that, this is actually really good. I really like this egg shape. It's also great for whether you're a palm grip or really any of the grips. You can do claw. It's just a really nice shape that'll fit most people's hands and grip styles. Now, like the Logitech G305, this has the same skate design with four skates in each corner, which is not the best as this does add a little bit of drag. So you will notice some drag, well, depending on how perceptive you are to mice, this does have some drag with the skates. It's not a perfect glide. Now the cable here is not one of those ultra light braided cable designs that all of the new mice are using. This still has your traditional, you know, rubber coated cable. However, it is a lighter rubber coated cable. It's not very stiff at all. Uh, it doesn't keep its shape when you get it in the box. It doesn't have that crisscrossy zip tie pattern to it. It's actually pretty free flowing. And honestly, for a cable like this, it's very good. If you leave some slack on your desk, you'll have no problems with it pulling. Now for switches, this uses Omron switches and they're very light, which I really do enjoy. But if you are someone who, well, maybe you don't like super light switches, maybe this is not the mouse for you, but I really do like this for spamming. You know, if you're in an FPS game and you need to spam your secondary, uh, if it's only semi-auto, very quick to do that. Very spammable, I really like that. Now the scroll wheel here does not feel budget at all. It does not reflect the price point. That's because Logitech has a lot of experience with scroll wheels. It's very tactile, it doesn't feel mushy, and it does not feel budget at all. Now the weight here is 85 grams with the cable. So realistically, uh, you're looking at probably 80, 81 grams. Now this is a little bit heavy for me personally. I do prefer a lighter mouse. However, I also really, really like the shape of this. So you're gonna have to decide, you know, the trade-offs there as well as, well, this is a great price. Now, lastly, the RGB, this does have quite a bit of RGB. It has the Logitech G logo and it has this cool like half moon shape around the back. Very bright lighting, very vibrant lighting. Very cool, I really do like it. But with that, let's move on to the number four spot, which is the Razer Death Adder V2 Mini, coming in at a price tag of 25 bucks at the time of filming. Again, check the links below for current pricing. Now this is using the Pixar 3359 sensor, which is actually a very good sensor. This is pretty much the same as the 3389 sensor, which is very widely used. The only real difference here that you might notice is a higher liftoff distance. Uh, and that's really the only thing that you're gonna notice. It didn't bother me in game, never did any spin outs or anything like that. Uh, however, I do play at 800 DPI at a 1440p resolution. But yeah, overall, a great sensor. Now this hits a 1000 Hertz polling rate up to 8500 DPI. 300 IPS and 35 Gs of acceleration. Now build quality here is really, really good. We do expect that from Razer. This is a lightweight mouse, but still maintains a very rigid body and structure and overall just feels premium. Now that being said, this is a small mouse. When they say mini, they are not kidding here. This is smaller than the Viper mini. This is also the smallest mouse on the list. If you are a palm gripper, which I am a palm gripper, if you're a palm gripper and you have medium hands, you cannot use this mouse. You might be able to, but probably not. You'll probably have to change your grip. If you have large hands, forget it. You can't go with the mini. However, if you do have small hands or if you have medium hands, but do a claw grip or something like that, well, you just got really, really lucky here. So this is a great mouse depending on your hand size 
and your grip. For skates, these are virgin grade PTFE with a pretty good design, having two skates in the front, right, and left corners, a large skate on the back, and then a small skate around the sensors. Now, the two edge skates in the front do cause a little bit of drag. However, not like the Logitech, not quite as bad as the Logitech, still very, very manageable on both the Logitech and this one, but uh, if you're looking for a perfect glide, well, the Razer doesn't quite have it, but it's still much better than the Logitech. For the cable, this uses Razer's SpeedFlex cable, which is fantastic and honestly feels like a wireless mouse. We all love those ultralight cable designs. Pretty much all of them are close to as good as each other, but yeah, pretty good. For the switches, this is using Razer's optical switches here. That's a big advantage. Not the Gen 2s, you still have the Gen 1 opticals, but they're super clicky and satisfying. And if that's what you're into, Razer does a great job with their switches. Razer does, well, maybe my favorite switches ever, which I think is their Gen 2 opticals. Those are great. Now the scroll wheel here is good, but not as good as the Logitech's tactility. And overall, I was expecting a little bit more from Razer, but definitely not a deal breaker there. As for weight, this comes in at 62 grams, which is very nice and light. This is a nice lightweight mouse. Uh, but again, it is fairly small. So we kind of expect that, especially coming from Razer. Now as for RGB, you just have the Razer logo. It is nice and bright. Uh, Razer does that minimal RGB very, very well. So thin lines look really crisp and it does light up brightly. So it does add a little bit of an accent to your desk which I do appreciate, but it's nothing crazy here. But with that, let's move on to the number three spot, which was kind of a shocker for me. This is the Red Dragon Ranger Lite, coming in at a price tag of only $19.99. Now this one was actually kind of crazy to me because I got this as part of the testing process, but was fully ready to maybe not include it since it is going against, well, name brand brands, but this did quite well. I was very impressed. All right. The sensor uses the 3327 sensor. Now, while this is technically not as high end of a sensor, it's still very, very good for most gamers out there. Even as a lower DPI player, this felt and tracked very nicely. However, if you're prone to very, very fast whips of the mouse, uh, if you use a lower DPI than even I use, which is considered a low DPI, if you're using 400 DPI or lower and you are prone to doing really fast whips, this may have some uh, problems tracking that. But that's really the only place where this sensor is not going to perform like the others on this list. So if you're using 800, uh, even 600 and up, I would say you're probably going to be totally fine. Now this is a 1000 Hertz pulling rate up to 12,400 DPI, 220 IPS, and 30 Gs of acceleration. Now the build quality here is definitely budget looking and kind of budget feeling, although it does feel solid. This has that cheap honeycomb looking design. It doesn't look great. Uh, however, this is the single lightest mouse on the list while also being the single largest mouse on the list. So Red Dragon is definitely bringing it there. This is ergonomic. So this is really directed at palm grippers, which I am, so I really like that. If you are a palm gripper, it's very comfortable, very ergonomic. All of your fingers have a place on this mouse. Now, that being said, again, remember, uh, you can still use this for fast paced gaming because it is very, very light while still being that ergonomic shape. I really enjoyed this mouse. Okay, the skates. This was also a surprise here. They are PTFE with four skates of varying sizes that basically go on most of the corners and they're not rounded. They're actually like more of the angular design, which you might think, okay, if it's on all of the corners, we're probably gonna have some drag here, but no, it glided surprisingly well. I think it was the second best gliding mouse or the third, but it actually glided very, very well. I was surprised at how good this glided. For the switches, these are on the heavier side. So if you're into a very precise gaming experience and you don't wanna double click, these are slightly more difficult to spam, but they're very precise. And if you're prone to accidentally clicking, well, that's not gonna happen here. They also have a great sound and feel, which I did appreciate coming from a more uh, budget brand. Now the scroll wheel here is nothing special. Uh, it's not super tactile. It's kind of mushy. It's not really mushy. It's just, just lacks a lot of feel. But for the weight, and this is what I was talking about, this comes in at 58 grams. That is the lightest mouse on the list. And it's really, really impressive to be honest with you. As for RGB, there is some RGB on the scroll wheel. It does look good, but it is quite dim. Not really a problem because I don't really mind, especially considering the weight here is so impressive to me. 
that it made the gaming experience very, very enjoyable. But jumping into the number two spot, this is the Corsair Qatar Pro XT coming in at a price tag of $24.99. I actually really, really love this mouse. Now this has the 3391 sensor from Pixar, which is Corsair's version of the 3389 sensor, which is at this point, one of the most widely used high-end sensors in the industry. I mean, it's in so many mice at this point. It's got great, very reliable tracking. It's really at a point where you can't really get that much better than this, where in real life, you're actually gonna notice anything different. So yeah, very high end, very nice. This is a 1000 Hertz pulling rate, up to 18,000 DPI, 400 IPS, and up to 50 Gs of acceleration. Now the build quality here is really, really good with an interesting shape that I ended up really, really enjoying. First, this is pretty lightweight without cutouts although I would have preferred just a tad bit lighter. The left and the right signs have this triangle design, which actually adds grip, which you might not expect, but it does add grip to the sides, which is nice. Also the shape allows for liftoffs to be quite easy. Now the skates here are PTFE, one large on the top and one large on the bottom, and then a very small skate around the sensor. There is like no noticeable drag at all here. This is the best gliding mouse on the list really great job with the skate design here. I don't know why so many companies don't get that right, but the skate design here, very, very good. The cable here is an ultralight cable and it's very good without tension. It feels wireless, all of that great stuff that comes with ultralight cables. Now for the switches, these are Omron switches and they're fairly light, which I really, really enjoy during gameplay. I think they're not quite as light as like the Logitech switches, but they are pretty close to that and they feel so good during gaming. Uh, I don't have a problem ever accidental clicking. However, that might be an issue depending if you do have that. But for me, I absolutely loved it being light. You get no fatigue during gaming. It feels a little bit more telepathic. I really just gravitated to this mouse and the number one spot, so much of the testing process uh, that, well, they're just so good. Okay, the scroll wheel here is very heavy and tactile. It is as great for high precision gaming, a funny and interesting twist with the lighter switches and then a heavy scroll wheel. But if you want really high-end precision uh, and while using your scroll wheel, this is great. Uh, however, if you do use your mouse for browsing the web, it gets a little bit tiring to be honest with you. Uh, it's very heavy, maybe the heaviest scroll wheel I've ever used. Now, as for the weight, this comes in at 73 grams. I would prefer it if it was just like seven grams lighter. That would be like so good. Um, however, still a very good weight for the price and everything else that you get, including that sensor. Now, as for RGB, this has very bright RGB on that scroll wheel. That's the only RGB you get. However, that's actually the RGB that you're gonna see most of the time. So that's probably the best place to have it. But very bright in typical Corsair fashion. But with that, let's move on to the best ultra budget gaming mouse, which is the Cooler Master M711. Coming in at a price tag of $24.95. This uses the Pixar 33 89 sensor, as good as the previous mouse because they're basically the same sensor. Very great, reliable, high-end sensor, fantastic tracking. This mouse absolutely brings it. It's so good for the money. All right, this has a 1000 Hertz pulling rate, up to 16,000 DPI, 400 IPS, and 50 Gs of acceleration. The build quality here is fantastic. By far my favorite shape and design just for the in-hand feel. It's also probably very similar actually to the Logitech, which is a very good thing as this will fit basically any hand type. Whether you're doing a palm grip or any kind of grip, this is gonna fit your hand. Now this is also a cutout design mouse, but instead of doing a honeycomb pattern, they actually went for that Cooler Master logo in there. So it's kind of like a hexagon, but it's stretched out a little bit. Very, very cool. I like that extra touch here. This is well put together. And honestly, it looks absolutely fantastic. Definitely the best looking mouse on the list. Now the skates here are virgin grade PTFE with one large skate in the front and then two smaller skates in the bottom corners. Now this does cause a little bit of drag, not as bad again as like the Logitech or it's definitely better than the Razer as well, uh, but it's not quite as good as the Corsair. However, it's still very, very manageable. Now the cable here is an ultralight design and Cooler Master did it the best on the list. Obviously that doesn't matter too much, but it is worth noting that this is the lightest feeling ultralight cable on the list. Feels wireless. The switches here are Omron switches and they feel great. They're not too light. 
They're not too heavy. They got a great sound and pretty much anyone will like this. It's really easy to recommend this to everyone as it's right there in the middle. It's a good middle ground. The scroll also matches those switches and it's nice and tactile. It's not too heavy. It's definitely not too light and it's not mushy at all. Great for gaming, great for browsing the web. It's again, right there in the middle. As for the weight, this comes in at 60 grams, which is very good and only two grams away from the Red Dragon, which came in at 58 grams, crazy. But yeah, so very, very lightweight. And by far, after using all these mice and more mice that we use for testing, the shape of this one is really, really good. Similar to the Logitech, but the Logitech lacked that weight. This is the best shape when you take into account not only the shape of it, but then the weight. So this together is a very, very good gaming experience. It does feel on another level. Now the RGB is the crazy cherry on top here. Even with that weight, this manages to have a ton of RGB, having that scroll wheel, and then having these really cool diffused glowing section inside of the mouse that you can see through that kind of honeycomb cooler master logo shell it just looks absolutely awesome again if you want to check out any of the five mice in this video there's amazon links below for the us uk canada and international links you really can't go wrong with any of them on the list make sure to check the links below for current pricing because you may want to take that into account and change which ones you're prioritizing as the prices all change if the Cooler Master's cheaper, that one's more expensive, whatever. But if you're about to get your new mouse and you want a new mouse pad, well check out that video right there. We did a top five mouse pad video. Really bring your gaming to the next level. Also, it's just an enjoyable video to watch. All right, this is Consumer Tech Review and I'll see you guys in the next video.